Hello. I invite you, if you have not already, to view the first installment. Today we are going to dive into sowing new ideas into our church and faith-driven organizations. I'm going to give you a wide shot of what we're going to cover today. We're going to sow seeds of new ideas, and we're going to do that by, of course, communicating. But wait, it's not just as simple as that. We have to have a system in order to plan, create, and then implement all of the ideas with a number of people and personalities. We're going to use God's word just like we did last week with the example of Moses and Jethro. We can use that as our foundation to revamp and revitalize how we are bringing ideas to the forefront assessing their importance and also how it will help the community and not be self-serving, and then how the church as a body can help implement each stage of these ideas to bring them forth. It may be necessary for your church to start to pare down and focus on one specific thing and doing that with great joy and with excellence. Small minds discuss people, average minds discuss events, and great minds discuss ideas. That quote is largely attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt. Welcome to the second installment of Mediocrity and Ministry, How to Battle Everything from the Pulpit to Social Media Platforms. This series will help improve overall communication and workflow within your organization. The goal is for you to take all of this information and start the conversation. You have the power to make an impact and greatly influence change. Let's start by asking a few questions. Number one, are we focused on articulating our vision and driving the mission? Number two, do our ideas create a service to the community? And number three, when we encounter defeat, do we continue to be innovative? These questions all point to our motive. What is the motive, the rationale, the ambition behind our ideas? Now, I've heard it said, and you may have too, that People leave churches and organizations because they cannot control it. And I believe that is so true. How do we change that? How do we change that so everyone feels heard, taken seriously, and most importantly, they don't feel undervalued? It begins with honesty. To start, we should know why our idea is important. The Bible declares that God is not the Lord of confusion, and as Christ followers, we can use his light in the dark, chaotic areas of our ministry, those mediocre mediocre (laughs) areas. We can use his light, and once we've sown new ideas, new seeds, we need to feed them as much nourishment as possible. That means we need to have a plan that everyone agrees on. If we think of these new ideas as seedlings in our garden, we will do everything we can to protect it. In the planning stage, your team will decide where or who will gain the most from this idea. You will give it the attention and the structure it needs to succeed. Perhaps you place your best, most well-informed people in charge and follow their lead. As you continue making small adjustments, adjusting the soil, the temperature, the light, all those little things, keep everyone in the loop. Because as long as you are not communicating as a team, you're gonna continue in mediocrity. Before your next planning meeting, send out a quick email and ask what one thing one thing your organization should implement. That's how it starts. A simple question. Here is how you can start discussing ideas. 
Number one, what is the goal? Number two, how will this idea meet an immediate need, minister to the hurting or underserved? And number three, how will you implement this idea? And the point of kicking mediocrity to the curb is not focusing on including everyone, but encouraging everyone to use their gifts to create an atmosphere of excellence. Think about the last time you experienced an awesome church service. Now think about that from a non-believer or a new in Christ perspective. How would they have felt? The best thing we can do for our organization is to look through the lens of the new person. Take inventory and plug in the right people into the right ministry. Focusing on one great new thing with God at the center will transform your church. Do one thing well instead of several at a mediocre level. As God increases your territory, he will also increase the giftings present within your church. Pray for courage to lead with wisdom. We have seeds to sprinkle and we cannot lose the sight of what is falling on us. And if we start embracing the we'll get by attitude, sowing new seeds means that we won't protect those ideas and bring them to the forefront. Being honest with the person who presented it and having the follow through to implement. Instead, what will happen, we will plant a garden and we won't give barriers or parameters and people will just walk all over that new growth and nothing will flourish. It may be a struggle or even a challenge to get people plugged into the right areas, especially if someone is on fire and they want to see the change. That means that they notice something is broken. Put them in a place that you know that they will be effective. That, of course, will take conversation, prayer, and leading them by the hand into ministry. We can sow these seeds and produce a bountiful harvest of new in Christ, new believers, renewed energy and strength and vitality so that we can continue pressing forward towards the goal. I look forward to seeing you all next week for the third installment. If you have not seen the first, please do so now. And don't forget to share this with someone that could benefit. Please visit www.toryslaughter.com for more resources, information, and of course, to get your freebies. There are tons of free downloads. There's an online course, and I would love to connect with you. See you next week. Music